we're moving away from our last topic now and we're going to have a look at some uh, shapes. So our title today is going to be area and perimeter of compound shapes. Short catchy title for you. Um, you'll need your ruler to hand um, so you can start by uh, underlining your title but you will need your ruler to draw some shapes in a second. Okay, so just if you want to, if you want to pause and grab your ruler, feel free. Um, right, so area and perimeter of compound shapes. Compound just means a couple of normal shapes put together to make an unusual shape. Um, but let's just quickly start by reminding ourselves what area and perimeter are. Draw yourself just a, a rectangle, doesn't matter how big. Um, doesn't matter how big at all. In fact, I haven't even counted mine, don't know what it is. So draw yourself a, a rectangle. We'll all put the same numbers on. So I'm going to say that that's 5 metres and I'm going to say that that's 10 metres. So perhaps it's the measurements of a garden or something like that. So 5 metres and 10 metres. We can be asked for two things from a shape like this. We can be asked for the area and we can be asked for what we call the perimeter. Now you'll have seen those words before, I'm sure lots of you in fact have just written down straight away what we need to do. Uh, for those of you who have forgotten, because it has been a while, um, area is how much is inside the shape. So the area is what's enclosed by the shape. And in order to get the area of a rectangle, we multiply the width by the height, which gives me 50. And then you need to remember uh, what our unit is. So I did metre times metre. So I've now got a metre squared. If it was centimetres, I'd have centimetres squared. If it was millimetres, I'd have millimetres squared. But just remember, when you've got area, you're going to end up with a squared up there. And then for the perimeter, well, you might just want to make yourself a little note. We need to add up all of the sides. Now, they very, very rarely give you all of the sides. If I were you, onto your picture, I would add another 10 and I would add another 5. Okay? Just so that you can now, my maths teacher used to say, whenever she said perimeter, we had to say ant. We had to pretend to be an ant that was going to walk all the way around the shape. So 10, add 5, add 10, add 5, which is um, 10, add 10 is 20, 5, add 5 is 10, so that's 30. And I haven't multiplied any of my metres, so I'm still just in metres. So that's how I work out the area and perimeter of just kind of a bog standard rectangle. We are going to move on to look at some pretty difficult shapes. Um, we're going to press some new buttons on the calculator, uh, but for now, um, we're going to look at shapes made up of more than one rectangle. So now, can you draw me something that looks a little bit like the shape I'm about to draw? Don't worry uh, if it's not exactly the same. Just kind of draw me some kind of L shape. So something that looks a little bit like this. It doesn't matter how fat it is or big it is, just uh, some kind of L shape. Make it big enough that you'll be able to, um, oh, I haven't matched them up, look. Make it big enough so that you'll be able to write inside it and around it. So something like that, it doesn't have to be exactly that. Pause if you want and count mine and copy it exactly or just draw me some kind of L shape. Right, now, um, it's really important that you put the same numbers as me in kind of the equivalent place. So on this top side of yours, can you put four centimetres? I know it probably isn't four centimetres, but we're going to say it's four. These pictures are what we call not to scale. That's something that you'll see a lot in your exam. Not to scale, meaning it's kind of roughly right, but we haven't measured it. Um, let's say that this is 15 centimetres. Let's say that's 10 centimetres, and let's say this one is, um, ooh, what should we say, 8, uh, ooh, no, 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 do 9 centimetres. Okay? Right, so, we need two things from our compound shape. We need its area, and we need its perimeter. 
Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to think, right, well, we don't know anything about L shapes. We haven't got any formulae for L shapes. So what you need to do is you need to try and split your L shape into two rectangles because we do know how to deal with rectangles. So you could split it across like that. You could draw a line there and have that rectangle and that rectangle. Or you can draw a line down there and have that rectangle and that rectangle. It doesn't matter at all which one you do. I think it's more obvious in this case to put a line there and to split it like that. Uh, I'm going to call this rectangle rectangle 1 and I'm going to call him rectangle 2 just so that in a minute when I'm setting my work out I can set it out really really clearly. Right, okay, now what do I need to do? Well, there's a couple of lengths that I don't know. So I need to fill in those lengths first, that's probably the first thing I need to do. So let's look at this length here. Well, all the way up is 15 centimetres. And this bit is 10 centimetres. So what's left over for that little bit there? Imagine you had a 15 centimetre tower of bricks. And then here you've got a 10 centimetre tower of bricks. How many more centimetres of bricks would you need to put there? So you would do 15, take away 10, and that's going to give us 5 centimetres to go there. Right, now we need to work out this side. So now we're talking about bricks kind of lying down. I've got nine centimetres of bricks here, and I've got four centimetres of bricks here. So how much would need to go there? If that's nine and that's four, well, I've got five left over to go there. Right, so we need to do two things. Let's look at the area. So I'm going to put area one. I'm going to work out the area of rectangle one first. Which is, well, if I, if I can ignore all of that, I'm just looking at rectangle 1, and the width is 4, and the height is 5. So I need to do 4 times 5. Ignore all the other numbers, you just want the width of that rectangle and the height of that rectangle. So 4 times 5, which is 20, uh, and I'm in centimetres, so I'm going to have centimetres squared. So that was rectangle 1. Let's have a look now at rectangle 2. Um, right, there's a lot of numbers hanging around. Let's get rid of him to start with. So you need to ask yourself two questions. How wide is rectangle 2? Well, he's 9. And how tall is rectangle 2? Well, there's his height, which is 10. This 15 is the height all the way to the top, so we don't care about him. We only care about the numbers, which are just talking about this rectangle. 9 times 10 gives me 90 centimetres squared. So then the total area, I'm going to get by adding my 20 and my 90, which is 110 centimetres squared. So the area of the whole thing then is 110 centimetres squared. So I haven't done anything new. I'm still using my base times height, but I'm just having to remember to split my shape. Now, perimeter, we've done all the hard work now for perimeter. For perimeter, I needed to know these two sides, because remember, you're an ant, you're going to walk all the way around the outside of your shape. You never go in it, you just walk all the way around the outside. So the perimeter is 4 plus 5 plus 5 plus 10 plus 9 plus 15. Right, let's work this out. 5 out of 5 is 10, so they give me 20, 30, so 35, add 4, 39, add 9, 48, hope that's right, 9, 14, 24, 33, 40, 48, yeah, 48 uh, centimetres. OK, so the important steps, you might want to just pause maybe and write down some steps. So maybe step one would be split your shape into some rectangles. Sometimes, most of the time, it would be two rectangles. Sometimes it might be three rectangles. So split it into rectangles and number them. And then maybe step two would be find the area of each rectangle. Step three, add them all together. OK, now for the perimeter... 
step one is probably fill in the missing sides, although that's sometimes useful for area as well. And then step two, you want to add up all of your sides. Okay, right, I'd like you now to have a go at worksheet um, one, please. Okay, so worksheet uh, one to do with the area and perimeter of compound shapes. Okay, so that's kind of lesson one. And then also this week, um, you'll have uh, area of a couple of other interesting shapes. So it's, the shape's going to get a little bit more uh, interesting. But I'd like you to stop there, please, uh, and have a go at worksheet one.